In this video, we will give an introductory explanation on how Abacus Standard Solver algorithm, generally known as Implicit Solver, works in Abacus software. We also explain what step, increment, iteration, and frame are. If you are interested in this topic, please watch the video till the end and add comment if you have any question regarding Implicit Solver. We hope you enjoy the video. In Implicit Solver algorithm, equations are formulated in the matrix form in this static equilibrium where P is the external force vector and I is the internal force vector and N is the number of equations. Therefore, whenever the problem is in static equilibrium, the difference between external and internal force vectors is equal to zero. Implicit solver use newton raphson method to solve these nonlinear equations. When the difference between both external and internal force vectors is not equal to zero, it is equal to stiffness matrix multiplied by a correction factor. According to the equation, K is the stiffness matrix and C is the displacement correction. Implicit solver uses an iterative algorithm to solve this static equilibrium, and convergence is achieved when the solution reaches a stable state. In continue, it is shown that how this set of equations is solved by iterative method. For simplicity, the method is illustrated for a one-dimensional problem. This bar is assumed to show nonlinear load displacement behavior. The question is, how much the bar elongates due to the applied load? In the other words, we are looking for the magnitude of displacement caused by the applied load. For this example, we can define a general static step in Abacus software which uses implicit solver algorithm to solve the problem. Imagine that the load displacement response of the bar under applied load of P0 is similar to this plot. In this plot, P0 is a known parameter and implicit solver tries to solve the static equilibrium equation to find the U5, which is the unknown displacement. Since solving the problem for the whole load in one attempt may lead to convergence difficulties, therefore, implicit solver applies the load in several smaller segments, similar to what is shown in the plot. In other words, instead of finding displacement at point 5 based on data of point 0, at first, solver finds displacement of point 1 based on information of point 0, then go from point 1 to point 2. This approach will continue until the solver reaches to point 5. Each interval is known as increment. Now let's see how an increment is solved. As the problem is assumed to be nonlinear, implicit solver uses iterative newton raphson method. For understanding how iterative method works, imagine that the solver is solving the fourth increment. At the start of the increment, which is at point 3, all required parameter is known. Implicit solver should calculate parameters at the end of the increment, which is 0.4. For this purpose, solver will calculate the stiffness using the data at 0.3 and use the stiffness to predict the displacement at the end of the increment. Solver might need to repeat this procedure and correct the displacement several times to reach to the solution or to converge. Every try to correct the predicted displacement is known as iteration. Sometimes, solver cannot converge to a solution, even after several iterations. Let's observe the implicit solver mechanism in terms of flowchart. At the beginning of an analysis, initial conditions such as boundary and loading conditions and also interactions are defined. In the first iteration of the first increment, stiffness matrix is assembled. Then, static equilibrium is solved using newton raphson method. If the problem is not in equilibrium at the end of the first iteration, in the other words, the problem is not converged, implicit solver tries another iteration. When the equilibrium has been obtained at the end of the iteration, the increment is complete and results can be requested at the end of the increment. Results of the first increment are passed to the second increment and the step is not completed yet. This procedure continues until the end of the step one. If the problem has two steps, second step will begin. 
This part of the flowchart is corresponded to the iteration, and this part of the flowchart is corresponded to the increment. After convergence of the solution in an increment, results will be written as output and make a frame of the ODB file. Sometimes user may request to write just some of the increment results to reduce the ODB file size. As a final part of this tutorial, let's see what step is and how you can control the number of increments in a step. A step in Abacus is generally consist of an analysis procedure option, boundary and loading conditions, and output request options. Step is a common terminology in both implicit or explicit solver algorithms. You can define multiple steps in Abacus. In particular problems, you may need to apply load in the X direction and then apply load in the Y direction, or you might want to simulate loading and unloading behavior of a material under external loading. When a static general step is defined in Abacus software. In the first tab or basic tab, there is a parameter called time period, which is one in default and relates to the total time of the step. In the second tab, called incrementation, there are important settings that must be modified with respect to the problem. Initial increment size, which is 1 in default. Minimum increment size, which is 0.00005 in default. Maximum increment size, which is 1 in default. And maximum number of increments, which is 100 in default. As an example, if the total period of the step is 1, and initial increment size is 0.25, the problem will be solved in 4 increments. Therefore, the initial increment size directly determines the number of increments and also affects convergence rate in nonlinear problems. Implicit Solver automatically adjusts the size of the load increments so that it solves nonlinear problems easily and efficiently. Thus, you only need to suggest the size of the first increment in each step of your simulation. There are two common errors related to convergence of implicit solver method, which are, too many attempts made for this increment, and, time increment required is less than minimum specified. How to solve and avoid these two common errors will be discussed in our future video. Thanks for watching this video. If you have found this video helpful, Please support our team with subscribe, like and comment. And visit our website for more products.